Hi, Jeremy Morgan here, and today we're going to learn some Markdown. All right, so Markdown is used all over the internet. If you want to use a static site generator like Gatsby or Hugo or something like that, it uses Markdown, Jekyll, all of them. Even a lot of external sites out there for developers like Dev2 and Hashnode, these all use Markdown. And of course, desktop publishing. If you want to publish a book on Amazon, it's probably going to be written in Markdown. So do you want to learn Markdown in less than 10 minutes? Let's go. By the end of this video, you'll know how to use Markdown and use it to your advantage to write blog posts or even an ebook. So let's jump right in. So I have a Hugo site up here and it's a static site generator that uses Markdown. I have my Markdown file open in Visual Studio Code and we're gonna write some Markdown and see what it looks like. See how the file name is .md? It can be either .md or .markdown to indicate that it's a Markdown file, but this is just a text file. Now, when you drop in plain text, it just shows up as plain text. Now, if you drop in a bunch of text with no line breaks, it will render exactly how you specify it in the file. So if you wanna break this up into paragraphs, you do that in the Markdown file. Wherever you decide to put your line breaks, Markdown will follow that. So how do I add a heading to this? We use the pound sign. Now we have an H1 heading. You use a pound sign for each heading type you want. So if you put in two pound signs, that's an H2. Three pound signs is an H3, and so forth. Easy stuff. So how do I make text bold? We put two asterisks around the text that we want to become bold. And now it's bold. Great. What about italics? Well, we just use a single asterisk around the text. And now we have italic text. Ah, but what about bold italics? Well, then we put in three asterisks on each side of the text. Easy peasy. So let's make a list in Markdown. We just drop some asterisks in front of each item in the list. And there's your unordered list. And what if you want it ordered or numbered? You can just put the number one and a dot in front of each item. And it will automatically number it. Now you might be asking, why would we not just number it and put in numbers? Well, if you do it this way and you put the one dot in front of each item, Markdown handles the list items and numbering. So if you want to insert something in the middle of a list, you don't have to go and change all the numbers after it. You can also embed lists within lists. Great. Now let's get a little more advanced. What if I want to drop some source code in there? Well, you put in three backticks and start typing up your source code. And then three backticks to close it. And there it is in your document. Okay, what about hyperlinks? I'm going to create a link to lipsum.com. We surround the text that we want hyperlinked with brackets, then use parentheses around the link itself. And there it is. Now, another cool way you can do this is with reference links. This is good if you want to keep all of your links at the bottom of a page. You still use the text in square brackets, but you create another square bracket with an ID. In this case, I'll use one. And then at the bottom of the page, I specify that ID and the link that I want to go with it. Simple. Now, what about dropping in images? Now, images look a lot like links with an exclamation sign before them to tell Markdown that it's an image. I have an image named hummingbird.jpg in my images folder. So I'll add an exclamation point, and then in the first set of brackets, I'll put the alt text, and then a link to my image. Easy. And you can link to external images just as easy. Here I'll add in a link to an external image. And there we have it. Now as a note, if you wanna center this image, or have it to the left or right of text, you'll have to use CSS styling to accomplish that. And you can add things like a horizontal rule with three dashes, and you can add block quotes with the greater than sign. 
And that concludes this lesson on Markdown. It's that easy. So there's your quick crash course in Markdown. There really isn't a lot more to it than that. Here's a helpful website so you can learn and try Markdown for yourself in a browser. If you like this video and you like my page, please subscribe. I put videos like this up all the time. And also I do a lot of live coding on Twitch, so please follow me here. I try to do live streams every week and I do things that are even more complicated than Markdown, believe it or not. Thank you for watching.